Well, Razorback fans, Nick Saban had some interesting comments about Arkansas after the game on Saturday and referred to Arkansas as a team that is not what we think it is. Whatever that means. Well, actually means something. So let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked on Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as we are moving on through. Going to have some basketball talk actually here in just a little bit dealing with the Razorback basketball team and once again as a reminder I'll be at SEC media days the SEC basketball tip off whatever it is uh on Wednesday and Thursday live from Birmingham so sweet uh so we'll have some lot of basketball talk during then but I wanted to open up the podcast with football of course as uh you know, Sam Pittman had a few comments to make today really nothing stood out uh as far as to really lead off the conversation, but something that I feel like is pretty well connected with what Arkansas has been going and doing with dealing with, with uh, the losses that they've had and five straight losses and everything. Nick Saban, who is the greatest college football coach that ever existed. I don't care what anyone says. He's the greatest college football coach. And he had a few comments and then we're going to play two of them for you. Uh, what he thought about Arkansas and kind of used it as a, uh, description on what to expect out of them after the game, even though our Alabama won. It, it was really interesting and, of course, really funny to hear some of the comments. So first we'll start with Nick Saban saying that Arkansas is not the team that you think they are. Pretty fascinating. Take a listen. Uh, so that you can go out there and play the way you need to play against really good competition. You know, I got a lot of respect for Arkansas's team. I mean, LSU beat them by three points. Ole Miss beat them by a touchdown all on the road. All right, so this is not the kind of team that you all think they are. They're a good team, and that quarterback is a handful. I mean, you know, when a quarterback can take a, a, a major college football player and sling them off like a gnat on a fly's ass, I mean, a fly on a, a gnat on a cow's ass, I mean, that, 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 that was one of the most impressive plays I've ever seen a player make. And, um, you know, but we said one guy gets a guy, you know, you got to hold on. You got to hang on. And we got to clean them up. We didn't clean them up. What a great quote. Even though he messed it up, I still feel like uh, the first version of uh, what Nick Saban said and talking about KJ Jefferson uh, was really was really cool but and funny. But still, he, he talked about that particular play, and that was the comment that I think got a lot of people talking just about uh, the, the funniness of it all. But in the first part where he it tells the media that he's speaking to and everybody that, Arkansas is not the team that you think they are. Arkansas is not the team that everyone thinks that they are. And he goes into how good of a football team they are. Now, you can take it, uh, if it's coach speak or whatever. But I went back and I looked at some of the things that Nick Saban had said about Arkansas previously and one of the 17 times that they've lost to him. But... Just to look back at some other press conferences post games and to hear what he's had to say and see when he's talking about Arkansas, if something like this has come up. And I went back just a few years. I didn't go back all the way because a lot of those videos aren't even available to see or the press conferences. But it was amazing to me to hear Nick Saban normally pretty complimentary after the game, but not into the descriptive detail of what he brought up. Like, you have the regular coach speaking, like, you know, that was a good team we beat today. All right. Okay, great. Or, you know, this, you know, we knew this was going to be a battle. All right. But, you know, we, we got to play better. All right. Like, it was just, you know, slip, little quick things. But to go in specifically of bringing up not only KJ Jefferson and his ability, but then going into talking about just the team that, hey, it's not what you think they are. It's, they're not the team that you think they are. Which to me, and how I translate it is, Arkansas is not the team that just because you see their record and see what their wins and losses are, they're not a team that is just going to ever give up. And they're not a team that is just an, an easy win against anybody. Like, 
they're a team that's going to give you 100% of what you want. And you got to play a lot better or play pretty uh, significantly to be able to get out of there with a win. It's easier said than done when it comes to this team. Because, again, you're sitting at two and five. Like, obviously, no one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear about moral victories. But when he talked about this particular comment, and this is what I really loved about uh, the quote, because he had another one in talking about Sam Pittman and, and this team and their will to keep fighting. Take a listen. Responsibility. I always get asked what the halftime message was, but obviously this one is not worth repeating. So why would we even talk about it? Uh, obviously wasn't very good. So, um, but anyway, uh, we got a lot that we can learn from. Got a lot of respect for this team. I told this, I told our team, I said, this is going to be a different kind of fight, right? Because, you know, Sam is an offensive line guy. He's a tough guy. He's a physical guy. And their team is going to keep fighting in the game, no matter what. They always do when they play us. So we we, we, we need to be ready for that. And uh, obviously didn't make that point as well as I needed. So talk, So just hearing that and kind of putting it into perspective where, again, I went back and listened to Nick Saban post-game press conferences against Arkansas. He's never really gone to that extent before. And I'm talking about KJ, talking about the team and, you know, being a, a, a team that not everyone thinks they are, but also talking about the fight that they have and saying that this team is going to keep fighting, that Sam Pittman is an offensive line guy. He's a tough guy. They are going to keep fighting. And I, I don't know. I just found that, that that was really interesting and putting it all together from someone like Nick Saban. I don't think it was coach speak. And you can think it if you want to, but I don't. I didn't see it that way. I saw it as a coach that is the greatest to ever coach in college football. Seeing a team like Arkansas and knowing them and knowing like what type of team that they are, where they are going to keep coming back. They are going to be physical. They are going to keep fighting no matter what. And they are a team that might be a, a little bit better than what their record indicates. I think that that's pretty significant. I think that that's a pretty ringing endorsement of what Arkansas has going on. So I thought it was a positive thing. Some of you don't care, <laughs> and that's fine. But I like how you still get coaches like Nick Saban to lay it out as to why he views Arkansas a certain way and why he views, uh, views Sam Pittman a certain way. And I, let's be honest, there's a lot of respect for Sam Pittman by Nick Saban because – for those of you who may not remember, Nick Saban desperately tried to hire Sam Pittman as the offensive line coach while he was at Arkansas. Even offered him an insane deal. An insane deal at the time. I think it was $500,000 a year as the offensive line coach, which was unheard of. But because of how much he loved Arkansas, he stayed at Arkansas as the offensive line coach for another year. And he got a significant raise. But think about how insane that is. You, you, you turn down Alabama, Nick Saban, in the, in the heyday as the offensive line coach, to stay at Arkansas under Brett Bielma at the same position. No, I, it, it just continues to, to go back to the whole thing about Pittman and his love for Arkansas, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, is that Nick Saban does have a lot of respect for Sam Pittman. And even though that this team has not done the things that they needed to do to win games, I think Sam Pittman put it best, the best way possible uh, in his press conference today where he said something along the lines of, we have proven that we're a good team. We just haven't proven that we know how to win. Because that's kind of the way I feel about it. Arkansas is a good enough team. Maybe that's the way to put it. They're a good enough team to be in games. They're a good enough team to be competitive. They're good enough to put themselves in a position to win games. Problem is, is they haven't done it. And... That adds into the frustration of what all the fans are feeling. Where if you're good enough, surely you can find a way. Even in a few of these games, surely you can find a way. Arkansas was in a position to, to beat LSU. They were in a position to beat Ole Miss. They were in a position to beat Alabama. Um, you know, They were in a position to beat BYU. That's still the worst one. But they found themselves in the position. Maybe... Maybe are we looking at it in the way of this team is not what we think that they are. They're two and five. But maybe there's some truth to what Nick Saban's saying. And 
After hearing that, too, it makes me even more interested to see what the season holds. What are we going to see from these Razorbacks? Are they going to keep fighting? Are they going to keep bringing it? Even though they've been hit in the mouth and they're tired of losing, are they going to keep bringing it? That's the ultimate question. Folks, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business, and you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best at qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Just head over to linkedin.com slash college, and then you can add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus their leading competitors. So LinkedIn jobs helps you find those qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. This podcast is also brought to you by Mark Hell from Fayetteville to El Dorado and everywhere in between. Mark Hell has been helping Arkansas small business community for over 30 years. Mark Hell is a global specialty insurer with a truly people first approach because to them, insurance is more than just a piece of paper. It's a promise to help people get back on their feet. We spend a third of our lives working, so on the job injuries can be expected. You work hard to build your business, so it's important to make sure that you and your employees have the right insurance coverage. Whether you're new to the business or celebrating your 25th year anniversary, whether you have one employee or 1,000 employees, Markel aims to understand your workers' compensation insurance needs. So find a local independent agent to get a free workers' compensation insurance quote today at markelinsurance.com slash locked on. That's M-A-R-K-E-L insurance.com slash locked on. Markel, insuring America's small businesses since 1930. Insurance carrier coverage, dividends, and services availability may vary by state. Markel is a registered trademark of Markel Group Incorporated. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, this was a very interesting question from... Uh, Chris, I believe, is what his name is on social media, on X, on Twitter, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it was actually something I thought about talking about, but didn't really know uh, when I would do it or when I would address it. But since he brought it up, uh, I thought, I was like, you know what? This, this would be a good time to do it. It gives me an excuse. It gives me a reason to uh, th- talk about and discuss it. But Chris says, hey, love the show. Watch it every morning on YouTube, but I have a question. If the other SEC teams played Arkansas's first half schedule, what would their record be? Now, again, people probably won't care about, you know, what does that mean or who cares because it's not the case. But I think it is a fascinating question to ask because I can't, I, I think I addressed this on the live stream after the game on Saturday, where it's still insane to me about the schedule that Arkansas had and how, ridiculous it is about being away from the state of Arkansas for as long as they have. I'm not excusing anything. Let's just make that very clear. They've, they've still lost the games. I'm not saying it's an excuse, but still it's, it's such a big like middle finger to Razorback fans and, and the team and everybody. When you consider that it's going to be what? 34 days, 35 days, something like that. Since Arkansas has played in the state of Arkansas, it's just absurd. Like at LSU, A and M in Texas, Ar- in Arlington, Texas, at Ole Miss, and at Alabama, and, and like that just to me is, is is still a ridiculous thing that the SEC did to Arkansas. I don't know what they did. I don't know why they did it, but it's a continuing trend. Let's be honest. Uh, they screwed Arkansas over in 2020. Um, you know, when they added Georgia and Florida. They're like, hey, here you go. Uh, they they just always screw over Arkansas on the scheduling. Like it's just it's stupid. And like having LSU play play them in September, when it's always been in November. I want I would love to know whose idea that was. Like it had to be somebody, and my guess would probably be somebody at LSU. Maybe that was like we're tired of playing Arkansas in November. We want to play them in an earlier part of the year. That's the only logical reasoning I can see behind changing a game that has been in November since literally 
joining the SEC for this year and, like, and moving into September. Like not the, oh, first week of November, it's always been, now it's the first or last week of October. No, no, no. Moving months completely and a long time. Like I just, it has to be something that somebody at LSU did. Because how, if this, because here, think about this. This is how the schedule I feel like should have lined up. I think it should have lined up where you still had your three first, first three games at home. Then you have AM and Arlington, just like you always do. Then you go to Alabama. Then you get Mississippi State at home. Then you go to Ole Miss. And then you go and have Auburn at home. Then your bye week. Then at LSU. At Florida. Then be and then FIU and then Missouri at home. Or have your bye week after the Florida game. And then play LSU. Like something to that extent. That's the way the schedule should have lined up. But there is no other team that I know in college football that had to deal with something like this. Like it, it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. So that's my rant about this schedule. It, it's it's a mockery to forget forget the team. Like forget the lack like the lack of success, whatever. I don't care. Forget that. It's a slap in the face to fans, to Razorback fans. Razorback fans had to go over a month. Over a month without having a home a game in their state. That should that that can never happen again. And I'd love to know the reasoning. Like may, I don't know who it would be to talk to. I don't think Greg Sankey has that much involvement in the scheduling, but I would love to talk to the person that put together these schedules and ask, why did you move Arkansas and LSU out of November? Because to me, that's the biggest variable in all of this. And that's really the biggest change. Like Arkansas has always played, I feel like they've always played Auburn in October, and now they're playing them in November. Like, it's always been A&M was, like, the first SEC game. And then, like, Bama. And Ole Miss and Auburn were kind of in there, too. And and then maybe Mississippi State. Like, that was just always how it was. But that's just my rant about it. Go back to the original question. About what would be other teams in the SEC's record if they had played with Arkansas schedule? Well, just for funsies. Let's just go through a few of them. And I will give my top of the head just what I think. Arkansas sitting at two and five. They've played the seven games, as we know. So let's look at if let's go through the list. Like if Alabama played this schedule, I still believe that they would be undefeated. Even though they're not undefeated, I guess they're six and one, but I think they'd be undefeated. Although that LSU game down in Baton Rouge at night would have been interesting because LSU because Alabama can score. And they're going to play each other later. So that would be fascinating to see. But they would be at no worse than five and one or six and one. If LSU played that schedule, and I know they would go up against themselves, but if LSU played that schedule, I think they, they already lost to Ole Miss. They'd lose to Alabama. I think they'd lose to AM, or at least it'd be an interesting game. Because AM's defense is really good. So I think at best they'd be five and two, which is what they are now. Maybe four and three, more likely. Ole Miss, if they played this schedule, they would have lost to LSU, or they beat LSU, but they also got him at home, but I think they would have lost to him on the road. I think Ole Miss would have lost to a and I think Ole Miss would have lost to Alabama. So, you know, I, I still think that they'd probably have three, four wins. Auburn would be, Auburn might be two and five. Because Auburn's not good. Same thing with Mississippi State. They may be two and five. Georgia would go undefeated. Florida would probably go four wins, maybe. Missouri, probably three or four wins. Tennessee, four or five. Kentucky, three or four. South Carolina, they're two and four right now. And Arkansas has had a tougher schedule than what they've had. So, I mean, they'd probably go two wins and Vanderbilt would go two wins. So the point is, is like bringing all that up. Uh the only reason I did is because of the fact that Arkansas schedule, if other SEC teams played it, not many of them would fare significantly better. But that's the problem is that I don't think anyone was expecting Arkansas to go six and one or five and two, even in the stretch. Because if I said before the season started, if Arkansas did that, if if they started off like five and two through the seven game stretch, they were going to win nine, 10 games. So. The only teams I think that 
would be just as bad as Arkansas on this schedule is Auburn, Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt, for sure. And then the ones that could be w- could be just as bad, but probably a little bit better, would be A&M, Ole Miss, LSU, or actually, no, A&M, Ole Miss, Kentucky, Missouri, Florida, and Tennessee. Like, those are just barely. So, point is, the schedule's really tough. It's We knew it was going to be tough. It's not an excuse, but there's no doubt that Arkansas, through this stretch, in my opinion, in the SEC, there's nobody that had a tougher stretch of SEC games. Like you can make the argument because I like throw out the non-conference, but like when it comes to SEC games, you start out at A and M, A and at LSU, A and M a neutral site in Texas, at Ole Miss, at Alabama. Sure, good luck. See how that works out for you. But hopefully that answers your question. Folks, I got to tell you about prize picks before we get into some Razorback basketball here in just a little bit. Uh, but prize picks, we know that it is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in America, and they are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily, sports span, uh, daily fantasy sports. And it's just you against the numbers. It makes it so easy to where you're not having to battle against thousands of other players, including the pros and the sharks and everything. It's just you pick more or less. That's right. You pick more of a stat or less of a stat. And you can watch the winnings absolutely roll in. You can make quick quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players and stat types that make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And they offer weekly promotions too that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday, <laughs> which uh, each Tuesday Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to twenty five percent to give even more value. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay as well to make quick and easy deposits into your account for this football season. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use promo code locked on college for a deposit up to deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use that promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100 with prize picks. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, Let's talk basketball. Razorback basketball, as the AP poll officially had come out, the preseason AP poll, which real quick, the AP poll means jack. It doesn't mean squat because that's not what the NCAA tournament committee and everybody looks at. It's net rankings. That's what matters. The AP poll does not account for anything. It doesn't. The only thing it does account for is that when you're on TV and you, you, you're playing a team or whatever, that little number next to your team name is, is where you're ranked at in the top 25 of the AP. That's really all it's for. And, of course, if you're the number one team in the country, it's going to mean something too. But Arkansas, once again, is for the third consecutive season, opening as a top 20 team as they were picked to finish 14th and or picked to be 14th in the AP poll. They were picked 16th last year in, or 16th in 2021, 2022, and then 10th last year. And Arkansas is one of four teams in the NCAA that have played in each of the last three 16, Sweet 16s, as we know. So uh, some other opponents that will be going up against Arkansas this year. Uh, number nine, Tennessee. Tennessee's the highest ranked SEC team. Texas A&M's at 15. Kentucky's at 16. And Alabama's at 24. Auburn, Mississippi State, Missouri, and Florida all receive votes. And then the Battle of Atlantis could, could potentially have some teams like North Carolina, who's 19, Villanova, who's 22, uh, also uh, being in the mix there. And lest we forget, uh, the number two team in the country preseason is Duke. And Arkansas f- plays them on November 29th. And Purdue is number three, who Arkansas has in the, uh, in the uh, exhibition game next Saturday in Fayetteville. So that's kind of what it all looks like right now for the AP poll. I mean, you know, take it or leave it. But it once again just shows you how much respect that people have for Arkansas and Eric Musselman and the program that he's built. Uh, I, I think it's fair to have Tennessee there. But here's the thing about Tennessee. At some point in time, like Tennessee's got a breakthrough. I think it's been Rick Barnes' biggest deal. It's like he always has really good teams, talented teams, tough teams, teams that do really well in the regular season. But when it comes to March, they fall flat on their face it's almost impressive. I think they went to the sweet 16 last year, which was like a huge improvement from what they actually had been doing. So, uh, but I, I think it's fair for them to be at nine. And honestly, I think 14 for Arkansas is fair. 
I really do. I really do. Texas A&M at 15 is, it's about right, I guess. I don't know, like, I'm, I'm going to just talk trash because that's what I do. Uh, A&M might be, like, the most boring good basketball program, or at least good basketball team there is. Like, last year, they may have, they're, they, like, they were good. And, you know, they beat Arkansas and had some success, and they got to the NCAA tournament, but then they got smoked. I think it was Penn State, when Penn State just, like, unleashed 23-pointers, something like that. But, like, they were so boring. Because last year, the thing that they did, and they did it really well, I'll give them credit, but like all they did was get to the free throw line and a lot of free throws and get offensive rebounds. Like it's it's it can win and that's great. But man, it is horrible to watch. And if I'm a bat if I'm a big time player, why would I play in a system like that? But they get it done. At least in the regular season. Kentucky's at 16. It's the lowest ranking that Cal has had since being at Kentucky. Gasp. Horrible. Kentucky fans are so mad. Well, you guys got to show something. All right? You got to show something. They're at 16. And the only other team that's ranked in the SEC is Bama. And they're 24th. So, Bama's going to be good. Like, they're going to have a good team. I just don't know how, like, how good. You know? Last year, I, I just got the feeling that last year was like Bama's chance. Like that was their team. And they blew it. Completely blew it. They had so much stupid talent on that team. Like if Eric Musselman was the coach of that team, they they probably go to the Final Four, maybe even win the national championship. If Eric Musselman was the coach of that team. But they still just fall short. Auburn's not in the top 25. No... The, that's another thing about Auburn. Like they, I think they shot their wad a few years ago. Like that was their chance. Same thing. That was their chance to get a championship or whatever, and they blew it. Had one of the most talented teams in the in the country, and they blew it. Mississippi State is going to be solid. Missouri's, you know, whatever. They'll be all right. Dennis Gates. I'm curious to see. I know he's got a good team, and he's got some talent there. But I'm going to be curious to see how he handles replacing his uh, his guys. That all came from what was it, uh, Cleveland State from the year before? How's he going to do with like new guys that are new to the program? And Florida having two votes. I don't know. I'm not thinking. I don't think Florida's going to be that good. But think about that. Like Ole Miss doesn't get any votes. I still think Chris Beard's team. I think they're going to be a sleeper. I think they're going to be a team that's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Like not a national championship contender, but just a team that like just muddies it up and dirties it up and ends up going to the NCAA tournament. I think they're going to be good. Vanderbilt is always going to be that weird team where they'll, they'll probably like, cause they play 18 games, right? They'll probably be like that seven and 11 team or like eight and 10, but they'll beat some teams. You're not supposed to Vanderbilt will be that LSU is not going to be good. Who am I missing? Going through some other teams, too. Georgia. Pff, still have Mike White. And then South Carolina. No, they're not going to be good. That's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's kind of the way of the SEC right now in basketball. I believe that this year, it's going to come down to, like, one of three teams to win the league. And I think it's going to be Tennessee, Arkansas, and I think Kentucky. Nothing against A&M. Again, they, they, they're a good team, but like I think it's going to be one of those three teams that wins the league. And it's not that it matters if you do or not, but it just kind of shows you, you know, how good of a regular season you have. So, I don't know. I almost feel like I don't want Arkansas to win it just because it seems like they're doing so well in March when it matters the most. But, yeah, I think it's going to come down to one of those three teams. I don't see NM winning it. I don't see Bama winning it or any of the other teams. So, I guess we'll see. But we'll have more discussions throughout the week as I'll be there again in Birmingham for the SEC basketball tip-off, which, not to hate on it, man, but it's pretty unorganized. And it's not exactly the most well-thought-up, put-together thing. Like, Basketball Media Days is an event. Like, this is almost just kind of like, eh, like, I just got the schedule today for who's going when. <laughs> I feel like the days that we know are like the times we know when coaches are going for 
football are like months in advance, and this is not the case. So we'll have plenty more to discuss when that happens. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.